So thank you all for coming out. This is um, an amazing opportunity, and I'm so happy to be able to present in my pajamas today. This is going to be great. <laughs> so the title of my uh, presentation today is Revealing the Secret Life of Harbor Seals. So um, to begin this presentation, I'll play a sound, and this is kind of going to be a guessing game. So you guys have to decide whether it's Marvin the Martian or a seal that produces this sound. Okay, so raise your hand if you think it's Marvin the Martian. Yeah, thank you for voting. <laughs> raise your hand if you think it's a seal. Okay. <laughs> I would say it's sort of a trick question. The, the appropriate answer is it's a bearded seal underwater vocalization known as a trill, but I think that uh, the producers of Marvin the Martian probably took this sound and threw it into the cartoon. <laughs> so this seal produced this vocalization as a breeding call, and um, it, he, he did that in order to attract females. And it definitely worked, because when I heard it, I was like, ah, oh, I have to study seals. <laughs> I have to know what that vocalization means. What, what, why, how are they doing that? It's crazy, so that's what I did. Um, I ended up studying um, a Hawaiian monk seal named Keikoa at the University of, Santa, uh, University of California in Santa Cruz, um, and I studied his underwater vocalization, so um, it's, it's a breeding behavior. So this is what uh, Keikoa sounds like, this is what Hawaiian monk seals sound like. Pretty neat. <laughs> so while I did my master's degree at UCSC, I also had the opportunity to work with this guy. He is a 31-year-old adult male harbor seal named Sprouts. And Sprouts is the reason that I became interested in harbor seal reproductive behavior because in the springtime every year, Sprouts decides that he doesn't want to eat fish. He doesn't want to participate in research sessions. He wants to do this all day long every day. So that's an underwater vocalization produced by harbor seals during the breeding season known as a roar. And uh, you also saw some bubbles coming from Sprouts's mouth or nose, so we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but so if we look at the male harbor seal calendar for 2019, we see that the, uh, the breeding season happens in the springtime and early, early uh, summertime, but the rest of the year they're, these male harbor seals are eating a lot of fish, they're getting big, they're getting strong for this breeding season because that's their time to shine. So during this breeding season, uh, male seals are producing display behaviors and these are underwater vocalizations, those bubbles we saw sprouts doing. They're also using other parts of their bodies, so their front flippers and their back flippers down here, not my legs, but my flippers, <laughs> uh, to make other noises such as this. But why are they doing this? I mentioned that it was for reproduction, but there's two main theories as to why they're doing this display behavior. The first is for mate attraction. So just like we see Daffy Duck here, he's, he's dressed very nicely, he's got a bouquet of flowers for Daisy Duck. We believe that these male harbor seals are producing these display behaviors to uh, announce their um, presence to females nearby and to potentially attract them so that they can mate with them that season. Uh, the next function, potential function for these vocalizations is male-male competition. So um, it's possible that these display behaviors are used as um, a means to um, warn other males around them uh, that, you know, this may be my territory or this is my seal, my female seal, don't come around us. And that's to avoid fighting, contact fighting that we see these elephant seals doing right here. So um, harbor seals are potentially using these display behaviors um, as a precursor to avoid contact fighting because it is very costly for them to do this. Whether these function for mate attraction or male-male competition, it's still, uh, we're, we're still 
still unknown. We're, we're trying our best to figure this out. And um, something that's hindering our ability to determine that is um, our ability to see these display behaviors happening underwater. So since the 1950s and 60s, we've observed these seals on land and on boats using our, our eyes and binoculars, but that has its disadvantages. So we're only able to see the surface of the water and what these seals are doing at the surface, but I'm interested in what's happening underwater. It's the juicy stuff, right? It's they're mating, they're fighting, who knows what they're doing down there. So, um, <laughs> So uh, in the last decade, we've actually um, had a tool that's come up in marine mammal science that's used, and that is the unoccupied aerial system, which is better known as the unoccupied aerial vehicle, which is better known as the unmanned aerial vehicle, but that's a little sexist. What if I'm, I'm flying? I want to be an unwomaned aerial vehicle. So just to make things easier, it's a drone. Drones are the thing that's happening in marine mammal science right now. They're the big thing. They're really helping us um, figure out what these animals are doing underwater. So it's quite literally become a game of drones. <laughs> So drones are helping us um, collect the snot of whales so that we can look at toxins and, and their DNA. Drones are also filming um, the very bloody afterbirth of humpback whale newborn calves. Using drones, we're now uh, able to safely and um, easily measure the size of potentially aggressive leopard seals that are known for eating other marine mammals. You don't want to measure them standing right next to them. <laughs> so what did I use for my project? I definitely used a drone. Uh, the drone helped us video the harbor seals displaying at the water surface and under the water. But what makes this project so innovative is that we were able to pair the drone videos with underwater recordings of these seals vocalizations using a hydrophone, which is just an underwater microphone. So. By pairing these two technologies together, we can really um, start looking at the big picture. We can see uh, what they're doing. We can start answering questions that we've had for such a long time that we haven't been able to answer due to the lack of um, technologies like this. So questions like who the displaying seal is and what, what his neighbors are doing. Are they reacting? Are they just ignoring him? What about these bubbles? What do these bubbles mean? Are they coming from the nose, the mouth? What, what's happening? So to do this, I went to Denmark on a Fulbright grant last year. Um, actually, tomorrow is the day that we captured all of this uh, data. <laughs> so there's two, we went to Limfjord, Denmark. It's an estuary system where there's two harbor seal colonies. And um, it's, it was supposed to have clear water, but uh, the male seals decided to display in the water that was not so clear. Uh, we did get um, three examples of these seals doing these behaviors using this method. So this is just one example. So up top is the drone video, and then down below is a spectrogram, which shows the, it's just a visualization of sound. So um, the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is the frequency of that vocalization or the pitch. Um, the brighter the color, the louder the sound is. So this is, um, us pairing these two uh, methods together. So you can see the seal up top. We see that he immediately starts vocalizing as soon as he dives. We can tell what types of vocalizations they're producing. And then you'll see bubbles released at the bottom here. So for my conclusions, this was our first time for harbor seals that we've connected uh, visual observations using drones, and we've paired it with acoustic recording. So um, we now have a method that um, we're able to see the bigger picture and understand what's going on a little bit better. Um, bubbles are sometimes involved in sound production, so they're not producing bubbles um, every time they vocalize, and this has something to do with um, them recycling air. And lastly, we now know that drones are useful, they're easy, and they're cheap. So we're going to continue studying um, these harbor seal mating behaviors, hopefully in an area with clearer water this year. So um, I'd like to say thank you to my advisor in Denmark, Magnus Wahlberg, and my uh, drone pilot, Sarah Ortiz, because 
I should not be flying a $2,000 drone over water. And lastly, to the University of Southern Denmark and the Fulbright um, grant for funding me while I was there. Thank you, guys.